One of the things you often get asked as an aviation enthusiast like myself is how jet engines work. I mean, when you look at it, essentially, it's just a, a tube or a pod either on the side of the plane or under one of the wings. How do they actually work? Well, it's a lot easier to explain if you actually have some sort of prop. You can show people a little model of one. Oddly enough, I've been sent one by Engine Man to try out. It's an assembly kit of the WS-15 Chinese jet engine. And I'm going to make it here today. Why don't you hang around and see how it goes right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, indeed... I am building the WS-15 engine from Engine Man. It's a military low bow bypass turbofan and it's in 1 20th scale. If you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please remember, give it the old Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. And of course, if you'd like to give a bit more concrete support to the channel, you can do it through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs. So let's make a start on building our WS-15 jet engine in 1 20th scale from Engine Man. This is the quite impressively sized box that arrives when you order one of these. As you can see, it's the WS-15 turbofan engine. And let's have a look and see what we got inside the box. Okay, first of all, this is the uh, central spindle of the whole engine. So you have to look after that, won't you? The instructions. Um, there's a QR code here. Have a click on that. That takes you to a page where there's um, a whole load of instructions, about 18 pages of instructions. I think it's a PDF. You can download it as well and print it out if you want. There's also an instructional video here as well you might want to do. Personally, I'd have preferred a printed catalogue, but there we go. I, that's just me being old school. And then there's all the parts. Um, as you can see, all these pieces here that look like, um, feel like metalised plastic, basically. Yep, metalised plastic parts. There's lots and lots and lots and bits and pieces and shapes and uh, oh, that's the front end. <laughs> Is it the front end? That looks like a bypass area. There's lots and lots of parts in here. Uh, all sorts of bits and pieces and whatever. Anyway, all very nice. Uh, there's a spindle. There's going to be a motor in here as well. There's a spindles. There's bearings. Lots of bearings to deal with as well. Oh, just come off. Loads and loads of bearings here. Which is fantastic fun. A lot of these are going to go between the um, fan blades, compressor blades and the fan blades as well. Put those back on there for a moment so you don't lose them. There's lots and lots and lots of oops, nuts and bolts and bits and pieces. All sorts of things in here. Oh, main casing. There's an Allen key in there as well, because a lot of these things are run by Allen keys. It's very good. And oh, this is the presume this is the actual motor. Yep, that's the actual motor there that runs the whole thing. So you can have this running later on as a part of a stand. All right, there's lots to look at. Let's um, go online, have a look at the instructions on here. I'm going to print mine out anyway. And let's start making this model of a turbofan engine. Right, just to show you, here's the printed out version of the instructions. Um, each page comes with some Chinese text and then obviously the English translation and a diagram of what you're doing. So yeah, that's cool enough. That's good. 
Um, we'll see how easy these are to follow in a bit. At the moment, they look okay. I've had a good read through, so I'm hoping everything's going to be fine. Right, we are going to start with um, the low pressure end of the compressor stage, LP compressor, which is like the first compressor that the core engine deals with. The core engine, of course, powers the fan. The fan is different. Um, I think this is the front um, the front blade. It, it doesn't look the same as the one in the picture. The one in the picture has got lovely sort of sculpted blades, and these are very straight blades. But anyway, I think that's the right one. Then there is a, so a 6086Z bearing. Whatever that is, I'm guessing it's one. There, there's two pit in this picture. Here, there's two here, and there's two of these in the pack. So I'm guessing they're the right ones. And they fit this shaft, so that must be right. Then we put in um, this stator ring, which sits on there. Well, I guess that allows it to whiz around. Then we have another fan blade. I'm guessing first stage fan. First stage compressor blade, maybe. It's got a one on it, so I'm guessing it's the right one. Then there's another one of these rings. The second stator sage, which has a two on it. And then finally, another compressor stage. I'm guessing. I think it's this one, so it's got a two on it. So there we go. So that will. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Next, we're going to um, put on this sort of planetary gear system. You need to find the three round head pins. They're in this little bag with these very, very small bearings. These, these three, three little pins here. So look out for those first. So these round headed pins go into these lower recesses here the planetary cogs go onto those and then the retaining piece goes on here Now what you're going to need is there are three of these longer uh, bolts here that go through to retain this whole assembly. What we're going to do is just cover that up. You can see there's a hexagonal shaped hole there and that's where they're going to go into that. Just keep our finger on that and then one. There are two Allen keys supplied of different sizes. This is the bigger one. There we go. Like so, I can turn and then just do up the other two as well. Okay, so that's the cogs installed successfully. So next, the uh, low pressure compressor, LP compressor. I'll just call it LP and HP for now, low pressure and high pressure. These need to fit so that these cogs engage. 
because I'm guessing that's going to be something to do with turning the engine later. And these stators, I'm guessing. Oh, look at this. I'm guessing this these stators need to clip in there somewhere. That'll do. So I can still turn. Then we've got these collars that need to, these are going to have um, screws on them. So they're going to sit in there and they're going to lock against the central core shaft at some point in the future. I'm kind of tempted to put a screw in there now and then see if I can lock into it later on. Like that, maybe. All right, it says pay attention to screwing the M3 kilometer screw into it. I think you mean the millimeter, three millimeter screw into it. Instead of screwing it in completely without foot, right? So basically, put in the it's like a three mil grub screw in in here somewhere. Yeah, that's one. That's one. And there's two and there's three, right? So those it says put them in, but don't put them in too far, basically, because otherwise you won't be able to put the shaft in so what you could do here's a thought put the the shaft in now just for a minute okay put the grub screw in so it connects to it and then just undo it like half a turn so this can still move in and out but the grub screw is in place how about doing that sounds like a plan to me that's what i'm going to try and do Because it's got to go through through the whole of the the assembly, not just this outer retaining ring. It's got to go through the sent this sort of yellowy shaft as well. There's whole two holes there, and there's a hole at the top there in one. So I'm going to guess they all go in. Let's just put them in fully for the moment and then we can back them off a bit later on when they're all in because you don't want this to fall out either I think is the the idea here that's not going to go in there There's a hole for it. There is a hole for it. I mean, it's only got to lock one, one thing on, hasn't it? So, don't actually understand why there are two holes and only three of these grub screws. Anyway, I'm going to put one on because there's, there's only three, three of these things here. So I'm going to put one grub screw back, and fix the last one in. So I can go in there. Need 
go. So that goes in, in there, that goes in there, right? Right, so now they're Titans, what I'll do is I'll just take them off about half a turn each or something. Then the shaft can still come out, but the grub screws will stay in place. Et voila. Okay, good. Okay, so now we, having just done that, it says now put the shaft back in. Okay, fine. Put the shaft back in. We're going to fix it in place this time, but we're fixing it in place, and there's a bearing that fits here. It's the second largest, or so, sorry, second smallest bearing. It's a 634Z, of course. So, what you want to do is have the end of that optical shaft lined up with the end of the bearing like so okay and then you can tighten up the optical shaft like so in fact don't bother taking the optical shaft out because the next step is put the optical shaft back in so we're going to put this bearing this is the second smallest size bearing it says it's a 634z if you know what those mean um, so put the optical shaft in. The optical shaft sort of sits to the end of that bearing. The end of the shaft sits flush with the end of the bearing. Okay. Make sure everything feels nice and as compressed as it's going to be. And then tighten up the nuts we put in earlier, the crab screws rather we put in earlier. Okay, these are going to grip the optical, they call it not optical shaft, it's a common shaft, whatever. There we go. That's all jolly good. And then we can put, uh, it comes off, you see. Then we put this component on the top. And there are some screws, there we go. And there are some screws to put in to hold it all in place. In fact, nuts and bolts. All of these, these many, many nuts and bolts, start putting some of those in. I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm building this jet engine, but I'm filming it, so. So, complicated? Um, made a lot more complicated by appalling instructions and no part, well, very little part numbering. Uh, so that's one of your criticisms. Well, yeah, so you don't just need proper instructions. Who sent that to you? Well, the manufacturer. From? China. China, okay. Anyway, I need to crack on. But yeah. So what I do with this is I put the pin through first. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle. Just try and hold the nut against the far end of the bolt. Just take it backwards until it clicks in the thread. And then, then you can tighten it up. And just go around doing all of, all of them. Not, not these ones, presumably, because there's nothing for it to tack onto. But yeah, all these ones around here. Some of these bolts are a little reluctant to go in, so do be careful. What I suggest is you start the two ends and one in the middle, and then work out from those to try and keep it all lined up. And now for the high pressure compressor shaft HP compressor stage so we are going to have this part first I think yeah this part first again these actually this doesn't have anything it just slots down there for some reason then there is the 6805 now these are the second largest size of bearing and there are one, two, three, four, seven of them supplied. Okay, so that one hops in 
and sits into there. So it's free to turn on that. Okay. Right, so install the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six stage fan blade. And the four, five, six, seven, eight, fifth stage stator on the shaft in sequence. Um, right. Okay, let's 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 see what we can do here. So we're looking at I don't know. Actually, I actually I, again, um, I'm having troubles seeing what we actually want here. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's all these silver ones. And they look likely. So let's see if we can order them somehow. Have we got numbers three. Four. Oh, I see. Yeah. Eight. That's going to be seven. Is that five? Five, eight, seven, six. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And the relative status are going to have the numbers on the inside as well, so 8, 7, 6, 5, 6, 6, both of those are numbered 6, that's handy, interesting. Um, okay. I've got two number six status. Six. That's, yep, number six and number six. I'm sorry, four. No, that's a six. Six and six. Five, seven, eight. No number four. Okay, right. Well, that's a little bit rubbish, really. Not great quality control, I have to say. Right, anyway, so we'll just carry on as if it didn't matter. Which it doesn't really. Three, then a bearing. What should be four, but we're going to call it six. I, actually, I don't, I, think I'm, I don't know whether that's actually going to fit. Is that going to fit in the... Are they all the same size? If they're all the same size, I'm just going to put it in anyway. It's just the middles that are different. Okay. I went really, really bad. But there we go. So that's number three, four. All right, so here's the problem. Um, we have... Rotor number three goes in. We should then have stator number four. Now, stator number four is missing, so I thought to myself, maybe I can put in stator number five next and just shift everything on because I've got two number sixes, but the problem is it won't fit into the housing here. So that means I can't complete the rest of the kit until I get a new spare part. So here we are, uh, a month, just over a month later, stator number four. So I can continue with the construction. So stator number four goes in here, allegedly. Shut the other way up.
Okay, I think we've got all the pieces now. So let's get the HP compressor built. So the shaft goes into this end here. And it has a bearing that goes in. Okay. Next is a... Stage three fan blade, a bearing, and stage four stator goes on that bearing and then goes into this piece, except it doesn't. Does this piece go in? Okay, that piece says B2, I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna put it in, it's not the right way around. It's, yeah, I'm just getting fed up with this really. There we go. So, yeah, that piece goes in, that'll be fine. Okay, so we have fan stage four. We have a bearing. We have stator stage five. Fan stage five. Bearing stator stage six. Fan stage six. Bearing. Stator stage seven, fan stage seven, bearing, stator stage eight, fan stage eight, and that should be that. Okay. Right, so uh, next the uh, housing for the HP compressor goes on. And it says Right, it says clip the HP housing onto the module. Make sure one, the front and rear directions of the housing are clear here. The installation of the fourth stage stator limit two can be seen, but it is not too hard to break off the low pressure compression housing. I have absolutely no idea what any of that actually means I really seriously don't understand any of that so does that go on there if that goes on there then none of those are going to line up so maybe it's that way round that's the way right okay so if we Right, that, ah, right, there we go. Right, so those bolt holes will line up now. And then we need to put pins into here to hold the stators here in place where they belong. There's little pins that go in there. And then we can bolt these together. Okay, I'm with that. Okay, so you make sure that the stator is lined up with this and then the hole for it sits in there we can just push this black pin in to hold it in place like so like that obviously the status don't want to move that's kind of 
almost what state or means it's something standing still and it's the interaction of the status and the rotors that gives you your compression in the compressor stage which is the important thing because we need the air to get compressed considerably so we can then inject the fuel and when it burns it expands absolutely ferociously and that is what gives you your exit thrust because it gives you your velocity right there you go so the status are standing still and the rotors are turning what a pity <laughs> A pity you can't see the status really other than these end bits it would be really nice if you could see if this had maybe come out just a little bit two or three status out there so sort of poking up so you could see what this is about okay right so I'll just bolt those together now and that will be the next stage done it's not the easiest thing for chubby fingers like mine to do this bit so some patience is required okay it now says put the these together this this doesn't have to be screwed to anything cool um, these just sort of clip together really just until that's it they go like that then oh, I see so that's because they go in opposite directions very nice um, it says one small head faces back the small head faces back okay and do not screw the Kimmy screw well I'll do my very best not to if I even knew what on earth that Kimmy screw was Use the 2.5M nut and screw to connect to the LP compressor module and the HP compressor module. So connect these together. It says times six. Oh, that's the size, isn't it? The length. Okay. So um, basically just set screws all the way along this, this edge here. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Probably best to do this on its side. And I can get that into action. Again, not the easiest things with my chubby fingers. One thing is actually quite good is these um, M2.5 nuts and bolts. The bolts do seem to have a very good self-centering action on these. I haven't actually cross-threaded any yet. They do seem to be able to sort of resolve their angle very well. I'll just do the rest of these a dozen or so bolts. Okay, so next we're making the combustion chamber. This is the inner face of the chamber and this part has to clip in like so and then this clips into the outer part of the chamber like so so it's like a, a stator here a last last stage stator air goes in through here uh, through the into the combustion chamber here you know you can see the fuel gets sort of injected it goes into here and gets burnt in here and then it goes, sort of comes flying out through here i guess that's the idea so the other way around who knows okay now it says to put the four nuts into these holes on the side Oh, I see, because eventually you're going to have to, you're going to have to um, put something in there eventually. So, yeah, you put them in and then maybe use something just to sort of centre them like that. Okay, and that's done. The 
combustion chamber goes over the top here and then there's a series of nuts and bolts to go around to hold it in place okay now we move on to the low pressure turbine shaft so here's um Oh, is it the stator from the turbine? I don't know why it would have a stator, but there we go. That sort of sits in there. Then there's a a bearing that goes in. It's quite a sort of a slim looking bearing that goes in. That holds it in place inside this number 10 stator. Yeah, in there. We then have number 10 rotor. Make sure we've got these the right way up. Yep, it goes onto the actual shaft. It's a little it's that this is one that's actually quite tight. There we go. So then a larger bearing number eleven stator. Number 11, rotor. And that's got to, that's got to sit on the, got to line up these pegs here with these slots. So that could be a little tricky. It's a bit difficult to see. There we go. Nicely done. Then there is a bearing here now. <clears throat> There's a couple of holes and a couple of uh, places for grub screws to call. They call them Jimmy screws on this. They're grub screws to us. And they need to be going not completely screwed in, but not completely dropping out either. They need to sort of be half done apparently. So I will get those and I'll get our get the grub screw grip, get the Allen key and put it in. Doesn't want to go all the way in, but doesn't want to um, be sitting proud at all either. So about there is probably okay. You can see it's not sitting proud of the surface, but it's not rammed all the way in. Same with the other grub screw, or Jimmy screw, if you will. There we go. These are uh, like right angles to each other, so you do have to don't just put one in. And then hope the, the other hole's in the right place because you might be putting that hole into there, this one. Then that this hole will be around here and you might better get to it from here. So do make sure that when you line them up both, you can see holes in both of these. And again, just do it. So it's just not proud of the surface anymore, but not completely tightened up either. And then this goes in to the shroud here with the the outer hole on on the the, the rear flange the, the end one here having the hole goes around this way around okay and then make sure the stators over here because again we're going to pin through these holes into these holes to hold the stators in place Like that, and we just make sure the state is roughly in position. We can see there's a hole there, so we can pin that through like so. Same for here. Move that state up. Move that state around so it lines up against there, and it's most likely in the right position for the pin here. 
Let me put the pin in. Here we go. It's the status of there, and these don't turn. Excellent. Why are these not turning? Okay, let's have a look inside here. Oh, well, it might be to do with this massive great big pin that's been left and this one that's been left that those should have been cleaned off during manufacture i'm not going to say this is poorly manufactured but the um the uh, production quality control is very poor this shouldn't be. This should not be coming through like this. I've got a pair of nippers. There we go. Let's see if that makes it any better. I don't, don't know if it will, but we'll just, let's see. There we go. Right now, yay, it's turning because you got rid of the rubbish on the inside. Fantastic. <laughs> really not very impressed by that. Okay. Moving on then. Okay. So, combined combustion chamber module and low pressure turbine module. Okay, that all sounds completely crazy. Right, so fix the fan blade onto the front of here. So we'll get the fan blade. Oh, <coughs> here it is the fan blade. Flat side goes. Right, the next part is combined combustion chamber module and low pressure turbine module okay so um this is the turbine blade that goes on here and it goes into those holes there remember we put some um, nuts into those earlier on so we um just put those in okay If that's not going in, so I'm going to assume there's something about it not lining up. I'm getting quite tired of this actually, if I'm honest. It's not, um, Not the kind of thing I'd be liking to do if I were doing this on a Christmas day. To be perfectly blunt, I would probably have thrown it away by now. See if we can get that one in lined up before we start. Right, so that's in place. Now we're this is the, we've already put screws into this, so Um, I don't know where the put in the forty six eight four ZZ bearing. <clears throat> okay. 
I'm guessing it's one of these that we've still got here. It's got, still got two tiny bearings. And then this will go on there and it will fit in there, so that's something. Right. Then we're going to put this into here. Oh, I see. So these these have to be undone slightly so that the shaft can come in, then grip the shaft. Okay. So we can just put those on for the moment, not too tight for the moment. And then have to uh, do up the nuts and bolts here on these connecting points. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we do. Okay, we do that. Right. Um, next, we've got to put the end of the turbine casing on. There's a bearing that goes in here. There's a bearing already in there. Um, these we can just make sure they're cinched up against the the turbine so that's not funny um and then you can see there's like this inside ring uh, of brackets there's five holes there that's what lines up with the five holes on here so it kind of goes through there and then you have to line it up can see at the back here you can see how these line up like so and there are holes there there and, and those need screws oh nuts and bolts going through so we'll just do those they'll definitely have to come through from the other side and it's going to be quite tricky to get them in there so maybe if I can try and put the screw in from this way so say this is going to be quite tricky because they're not lining up terribly well uh, I'll try to oh, look from the other side. I'm sure it's less difficult to actually make a WS15 engine. Yes, there we go. That goes in. Okay, so we've got that in. We'll hold that there. We'll get ourselves a nut for the end. Try and fit the nut to the bolt. There we go. Is that working? Yep. There you go. That's caught. Cool. Excellent. That's the first one. We'll just do the other four. We're very near the end of the event now. So... We now start adding a non-original WS15 part, which is the electric motor that's going to drive this thing. So we connect the optical shaft this way, this way around. And we've just got these little grab screws to do up. Okay, now to that, we have to, how these are going to fit, two grub screws onto here. Uh, 
Then we have this stabilizing cage there. I guess the uh, cable goes, I don't know whether the cable goes through there or not, it doesn't really say where the cable goes at the moment. We'll have a look in it. We'll worry about that in a bit. We'll, we'll put this in first. I, and they must, it must go through there because otherwise you wouldn't be able to put this on. Okay, this goes in here and there is just four. And these are the self-tapping screws that are still left in a plastic bag over here. That you do this. You just line up the holes and put them in. These being self-tapping, they take a lot more effort. So we'll start them off with the long reach and then use the shorter reach with more leverage to tighten them up. The wire goes through this hole in the tail cone nozzle. The tail cone goes onto the back and turns and sits in place like so. Then the, the wire goes through the hole in the tail cone as well, like so. And then the tail cone gets bolted onto the rear of the engine. Like right, so. And then the nose cone goes on and just locks into place by turning. There's also this outer shroud of the engine to go on. So, and guess what? That has a whole load of bolts to do up. So, bolts around there, bolts around there. As you can hear, it's not exactly silent. <laughs> it's making a bit of noise, but you know what? It's it's kind of doing what it should. Um, you can see the air comes in through the air inlet here, hits these fan stages where it starts to get decompressed by, you can see the cone getting smaller, the gap here getting smaller. Then here, some of the air bypasses and goes straight out the back. That's the bypass air, which is why this is called a turbo fan, not a turbo jet. The turbo jet is this bit in the middle, the core of the engine. So this bit compresses the air, and then some of it gets bypassed, some of it goes into the core where it gets compressed further and further and further and further. It goes into the combustor where it's mixed with fuel. Fuel is ignited in there and it goes herring out the back of the engine past this rotor here, this turbine. This turbine drives the high pressure compressor, these bits are here. Two more turbine blades here, those drive the fan, which is the low pressure compressor, essentially. So this is called a two-spool engine. There's one spool there and another spool on there. And of course it comes piling out the exhaust. That's pretty much how a, a WS-15 works. There's no afterburner on it, um, strangely. I thought of, there would have been because it's used on a J-20 fighter. But hey-ho. So there it is. It works. It, you can use it to show people what's going on. Don't be fooled by the uh, some of this sort of static stuff. That's just uh, an effect of the rate that the pictures are taken on the camera and the rate that's actually spinning. Um, let's see if I can slow it down a bit. No, I can't. Let's see which way they go now. So you can see that this 
first high pressure turbine and the high pressure compressor turn in one direction on the spool the LP tur turbine and the LP compressor spin the other way on the, their spool and that's to avoid um, sort of gyroscopic effects of the masses spin opposite directions they cancel out the gyroscopic effects so there we go um, yeah engine is complete and quite noisy there we have it um, I really wanted to like this a lot I really thought do you know what this is going to be such a cool thing to have a model jet engine the plastic from a distance looks all right the close up it looks a little rough I mean these engine parts are high technology pieces of kit you know the the turbine blades are single crystals of very very exotic steels they they just look a bit rough the fit is okay but it makes an awful noise when it's running so there's the things rubbing here and there um it actually spins very quickly i would have thought it'd be better to spin a bit more slowly and get the directional things a bit more clear uh the fit is okay i mean it goes together all right the bit with um one of the parts being duplicated and then I asked for a replacement, took two weeks, the wrong replacement came, it took another two weeks to get another replacement, that's a month to get a spare part. Um, this is a $200 kit on offer. Um, it says 200 pieces on the box, it says 150 pieces on the instructions, a good 100, 100 120 of those are going to be nuts and bolts, so it's not like there's a lot of actual parts, although I will say the proper steel nuts and bolts do add a certain sort of steampunky authenticity if you like to the kit being a mechanical object is it any good for teaching how a jet engine works yeah i guess you can use it to show how a jet engine works there's no reason why you can't the things spin it's a two spool design you can have a you've got your low pressure and high pressure compressor high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine you can see how they all relate to each other you can see clearly where the fuel goes it's fine but i don't know it's it's a lot of money for what it is i'll put it that way i'll be um seeing if one of the local schools wants it to use for their stem classes um talking about physics or something like that maybe someone will it will go to use somewhere anyway would i pay 200 bucks for it no i wouldn't i'm afraid which is a pity because i so wanted to like it an awful lot um, these guys also do all sorts of other engines. They do a Rolls Royce Trent, which is the big high bypass turbofan you see on Airbuses and Boeings and stuff like that. That would be an amazing kit to see. Um, they, uh, Sterling, who sent me this, sell all sorts of things of reciprocating engine V8s and stuff like that. It's fascinating stuff, but it's a lot of money. Okay, it's, you know, they deliver worldwide, but it's still a lot of money for this kind of level of plastic some of the fit is pretty ropey i had to clean out um part of the one of the uh, shrouds because there was molding um frame lines that the injection points still have nubs on them they should have been cleaned off because it stopped the uh blades of turbines turning that should have been cleaned off at the factory um i don't know it, it's up to you whether you think it's worth $200. I personally wouldn't spend 200 bucks on one of these, I'm afraid. I really am very sorry to say that. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed the show at least. If you have, please remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And of course, if you want to see any of my future content, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you get a notification when anything new of mine is published. Thanks so very much for watching. Hope to see you again very soon on the channel. Take very good care now and goodbye.